I absolutely adore this meme. I don't know exactly why, but it's the best one ever. First of all, it's that it educates people. It makes them think about a concept. And here you have the holy minimum wage. I think every left-leaning person, and even people who recently become right-wing as they grow up, they still cling to this notion that the minimum wage is something sacred. That if you are to talk against minimum wage, you're somehow an evil person. The reality is that when the government says this is the minimum wage, what it actually says is that people whose work is worth less aren't allowed to get a job anymore. It is that the programs that are labeled as being for the poor, for the needy, almost always have effects exactly the opposite of those which their well-intentioned sponsors intend them to have. As an example, what are you referring to? Let me give you a very simple example. Take the minimum wage law. It's well-meaning sponsors. There are always, in these cases, two groups of sponsors. There are the well-meaning sponsors, and there are the special interests who are using the well-meaning sponsors as front men. You almost always, when you have bad programs, have an unholy coalition of the do-gooders on the one hand and the special interests on the other. The minimum wage law is as clear a case as you could want. The special interests are, of course, the trade unions, the monopolistic craft trade unions in particular. The do-gooders believe that by passing a law saying that nobody shall get less than $2 an hour or two fifty an hour or whatever the minimum wage is, you are helping poor people who need the money. You are doing nothing of the kind. What you are doing is to assure that people whose skills are not sufficient to justify that kind of a wage will be unemployed. It is no accident that the teenage unemployment rate, the unemployment rate among teenagers in this country, is over twice as high as the overall unemployment rate. It's no accident that that was not always the case. Until the 1950s, when the minimum wage, law, uh, wage rate was raised very drastically, very quickly, teenage unemployment was higher than ordinary unemployment because, of course, the teenagers are the ones who are just coming into the labor market. They're searching and finding jobs, and it's understandable that on the average they would have a, uh, be unemployed more. But it was nothing like the extraordinary level it has now reached. It's close to 20 percent. Why? Because the minimum wage law is most properly described as a law saying employers must discriminate against people who have low skills. That's what the law says. The law says here's a man who would, has a skill which would justify a wage rate of a dollar and a half, two dollars an hour. You can't, you may not employ him, it's illegal. Because you have to, if you employ him, you have to pay him 250. Well, what's the result? To employ him two fi at 250 is to engage in charity. Now, there's nothing wrong with charity. But most employers are not in a position where they can engage in that kind of charity. Damn, I love that man. The way he simply explains difficult to understand concepts. Now, regarding this, it's absolutely true. When you're a teenager, it's very difficult to find a job, especially if you're a guy. I remember when I was looking for an entry job in order to gain some independence from my parents, the only things that they were hiring was girls for video chatting. But for guys, only maybe like construction and other backbreaking labor, which wouldn't allow me to also pursue a career at the university. And that was a big problem. It literally prevented me from getting into the workforce because of the minimum wage. And what companies are doing in order to bypass minimum wage, they're trying to outsource their production into other countries like China, where they can pay the workers less. They create the product in China and then they ship it back into America where the Americans purchase for it. But what it does is it takes away the jobs from the United States and it pushes them into other countries where they don't have the same workers rights or they don't have laws for minimum wage or the minimum wage there is a lot smaller. And another thing that I noticed IT companies do, and this is very interesting because the same companies, they're big supporters of minimum wage. I mean, those companies, they're very outspoken and they're promoting left-wing policies. So what they do is they don't hire people, they contract people. So basically, if you want to work for an IT company, they will say, you need to start up your own business. Just start up your own business where you're the only person working at that business. And then we're going to make a contract with you so you work for us. 
and you have to do your own accounting. You have to uh, not benefit from healthcare options and other things that corporations normally give. You have to now start your own company. And once they contract you, you still go to the office at their place. They, they still have a supervisor that makes sure that you stay the whole eight hours and that uh, you don't skip on the company dime. And it's pretty much like you're being employed, but you're being subcontracted. So then they can actually pay you less below minimum wage. And I've seen a lot of companies in my country do this. They, they have ways of bypassing the laws, but usually it's the small upstarting companies that can't do that. Like, for example, if you want to open a small kiosk to sell coffee and you want to hire one guy, well, because of all the government regulations, because of all the minimum wage, because of all of that, you may just realize, oh, well, it's better not to start a business. And all of this is by design, you know, and again, like all these laws, they're supposed to sponsor the needy and the poor. But in reality, it benefits the rich because the rich can outsource their labor. The rich can just go somewhere else or they, they can find various ways and loopholes around the laws. And it's the poor people that the mom and pop shops that are just upstarting who have to deal with this. Then the second one is very interesting. Uh, George can't sell to you. He doesn't have a license. Right, so the holy license is uh, a plague in Europe. A lot of jobs that my parents did without a license now require a license. So for a lot of things that your parents probably could have done without any sort of trading or any anything like that, they could have done back then. You can't do so now. I know many people who mentioned this. It's like, well, you know, like my parents, they just got out of high school. They got into the job and they just did the job. Now you need to have a university degree. Now you need to have a license. So what happens is like the people who get the license, they are now more expensive. So the prices go up. But not only that, the people who can't afford to get the license, well, they're going to be unemployed. So what happens with all these people who are unemployed? Well, that's okay because the government gives you welfare, right? The government is going to take care for you. So all these people... They have to keep voting for politicians that give them free shit. Like they can't afford to change the system. They, they can't say, all right, well, let's have it so you can get a job without a license. Let's have it so that minimum wage goes. They, they can't afford to vote for those politicians because then they don't get welfare. And if they don't get welfare, then how are they going to feed themselves? So it's a vicious cycle. And the problem is it's not sustainable because the way it used to work was that the father of the family was the provider. So if you wanted to have a future, right, you as the father needed to have a large enough family so that when you're old, your children take care of you. But now it doesn't work like that. Now it's like when you're old, the government takes care of you. The government is now the father. The government is now the provider. The government is the head of the family. But the issue is, is that you still need to have the children, right? Because the government doesn't produce wealth. Like it doesn't print resources. It's the next generation that needs to still provide for the previous generation. The government just collects money and redistributes resources. It doesn't create things. So you need the next generation to be larger than the previous one. But what happens when people don't have children? What happens then? Well, the government doesn't have enough resources to redistribute. So then it has to think about things like, okay, well, let's have immigration. Like maybe we can bring other people in that are from here and we can tax them once they find jobs. Or they, they can find various tactics. It's like, okay, well, the welfare is going to run out. These people are going to be starving. So they're going to be on the streets rebelling. So the government realizes that it needs to be more authoritarian. It's like, okay, well, let's disarm them. Let's surveil them. Let, let's make sure that all of these people uh, can only use electronic bank accounts that the government can shut down. Let's make sure that we can listen to their phones. Let's make sure that we can check what they say on social media so that when they eventually get upset that they go on the streets demanding for welfare that won't exist anymore, then it's easy to arrest the leaders uh, of the protests, to seize their bank accounts. Right? So th this is exactly one meme which describes the problem with welfare. It's something that comes from well-intentioned people, uh, but unfortunately, the actual effects of what welfare is doing is uh, very damaging to society, and it's preventing people from being able to take care of themselves 
and it's making them more and more reliant on the government. Let me know what you guys think, and uh, if you like this video, please consider donating. There is a tip jar into the pinned comment, and I'll see you guys in the comment section. Take care.